Hey Mario, Mario, stop sleeping on the job. Yo, what's up? Name is Jet Leo One, and welcome back to some more Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. Last episode, we got ourselves a rogues welcome, and this time it's time for the adventure to begin. Because, like I said at the end of the last episode, beating up one bad guy and talking to a crazy old man does not make an adventure. And I'm gonna go the completely wrong direction. Because one thing that's actually kind of cool about this game is that it follows the uh, follows the ideal of most Mario games in that you want to go to the right. However, I wanted to go to the left because I know that that's there. Let me check something real quick. I've got four star pieces. Okay, so that's enough to get what I want to get. But there's one more that you can get easy in this area. But first, hey, hey man, what's up? Who's the hottie you got there with you? Boy, why are you talking about frankly like that? What's up, baby? Why don't you hang with us for a while? We play real nice. Man, what a fine looking Goomba doing with a tubby mustache man like that. Oh, it is like so sweet that you boys think I'm cute. Seriously. Yeah, guys like you make me feel like totally barfing. Now get out of our way. Ooh, that was cold. What, you too good for us? Come off it, sister. Nobody zings us like that. Nobody. Let's get them. And that was the most fun I will ever have doing voice acting. Ever. The Mexican Goomba Squad. <laughs> a Goomba, a spiny Goomba, and a pearl Goomba. My, the whole Goomba family tree. What, are they your relatives or something? The only one I should warn you about is that fellow in the middle, the spiny Goomba. See that spike on his head? Well, jump on that and you're the one who'll take damage. The Paragoomba is airborne, so your hammer won't reach. You'll just have to jump for it. Come on and jump, baby, jump. Always take your opponent's situation into consideration when fighting. Always. And also, we get to learn a good tip that I just realized when I was practicing for this. Or I say practicing, it's mostly because the Elgato software was busted. And just this recordings didn't work. But I learned that they teach you this tip right here because it lets you win the battle easy. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you something vital. You can press Y to change the order you to attack in. You can attack first if you feel like a Goombella. Don't forget that. And they tell you this because then you swap to Goombella. And you head bump the first guy. And then that le leaves Mario free to hammer the uh, spiked Goomba. So then you can just block the para Goomba and take no damage in the battle. It's great. I never really realized that. See? No damage taken. Where when I had been doing this before, I would always take the one point of damage. Oh, I failed. But I would always take the one point of damage because the Spike Goomba deals two damage, and right now Guard only defends against one, because I don't have damage dodge or defense plus. And you got ten star points. See, also I'm going to mention, right now, since this is like the first normal battle of the game, uh, I will be trying to do better than I did in Paper Mario 1 and actually work on... Like, as soon as I get into a battle, just shutting up and erasing the battle. Because uh, this game is just as long as the first game. So cutting that stuff out is going to be key to your enjoyment, unless you really, really, really like watching other people play turn-based battles, which I don't know why you would. They're more fun to play. Oh, way. Oh, way rides the Mexican Goomba Squad. Ah, later, losers. That felt awesome. Well, it was only worth 10 star points, so it's not that awesome. Are you ready, Mario? There are plenty more where they came from, and they'll all have it in for us. When they attack, try to hammer them and jump on them while in the field. Attack successfully, and you can perform the first strike when you enter battle. So if an enemy catches sight of you, be sure to thump him as you go into battle. Just like the first game. There's not that much different. Let's see? Nope. Okay. Because uh, After you complete this section, I think like um, there's an enemy down there. I was about to say a, me a rematch of the Mexican Goomba Squad, but it's not exactly them. Bye bye frankly. You'll never see us again. And he jumps up and teleports. Magic. I love it. So welcome down into the Rogue Port Sewers. Actually, I don't think I'll cut out these battles. These first Goombas are really... In they insta-kill. And I can just speak more about like style issues and stuff. So yeah, I mentioned you get special moves. We're on our way to the door to go get our first special move. And then uh, th that's the first normal battle. So as you can see, the uh, item drops after battle where you can get hearts, coins, and flowers back. And also items and badges occasionally if an enemy's holding them. Just like the first game, that returns. But yeah, we're going to get a special move. And like I said, the special moves, they are nowhere near as good as the 7 damage to everybody power from the first game. 
they're still okay, but you can spam them a bit more. And there is, after chapter 4, the chapter 4 power is pretty good, I will say. And you got an item, just like the first game. Just items. However, this game does have one thing over the first game when it comes to items, and that is there is a bonus dungeon. That I may or may not show, because I'm really lazy. And I may show it. Because I've... Like, this is the g game that I've gotten... Like, I've completed all... Like, I don't know. Like, 100%ed a few games in my life. This is the one that I'm saddest that I didn't, because I got, like, 99%. I got to, like, floor... 70 on the uh, bonus dungeon and then I just stop bothering there's a star piece right there it's quite nice I like that that's there because when you break this block later in the game because you know you're going to uh, you get to see that star piece if you don't know it's there but anyways I got to like floor 70 so I almost 100 percent in this game and I didn't so I probably will this time just just for my own personal pride but it is a very long very boring bonus dungeon it's, if you don't know about it, it's the pit of a hundred trials, it's a hundred fights. And it's all enemies you've seen before, except for a few that you haven't. Because they're unique to the dungeon, but they're just palette swaps, so it's nothing special. But yeah, and here we've got the Spinyas. First ones of enemies that aren't just flat, that you get to see that design a lot more. There are a lot of really cool 3D enemies in the game. They're also the first super annoying enemies, as I like to call them. The ones with the amount of uh, HP to where you can't just kill them with one person, you have to use two, which I really don't like in any game where it's like if you can't go one to one, it gets really, really annoying really fast. Where it's like, here's four people and all of them take a full turn to kill. Like, no, please don't. Which is mostly why I focus on uh, my playstyle in the, in the Paper Mario first two at least is to use badges to break my stats so that I can just like one shot everybody or at least have like a special move that one shots everybody there was a key up here you got a key it's a black key a strange black key what could it be for it's probably for opening a lock that's what keys are usually for but anyways yeah I'm just gonna grab that key because it's here let's check out this door or this hole in the wall it's not a door whoa um, okay. Hey, you! Can you hear me? You can? That must mean you're the hero of legend. I'm not Link. Do you not see my clothes? They're they're not green. They're red and blue. Only the great hero of legend can hear my voice. Yeah, everyone, within, everyone else? Nothing. See, a long, long ago, an evil spirit cur cast a curse on me, locking me in this box. I was bummed. Understatement of the year award goes to Mr. Man in the Box. 2014. I've been here ever since, waiting a long, long time for the hero to come by. So yeah, anyways, big guy, what brings a hero like you to a place like this? Uh, Mario, a word with you, I'm not exactly confident that we can trust this box. I think it may be best not to mention that we're looking for the crystal stars. Well, drat. I just said it out loud! What's wrong with me? <laughs> Lots of things, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah? Searching for the crystal stars, are you? So you really are a hero. Well, you're definitely gonna need my help if you hope to get those bad boys. So, uh, first you should look for the key to this box, then you should let me out, definitely. By the way, the key looks like this. Once again, can, can we, can somebody, like, is there any scientists out in the crowd? Can you please invent the ability to speak in pictures? It's like some sort of tool that lets us do that, maybe like hologram projector, where you can, like, talk in a picture. So, yeah, we already got that key, because it was just sitting there being like, come get me. Well, what do you think we ought to do, Mario? Well, I think we ought to give him the key. I mean, there's nothing else we can really do down here. I'm sure this is totally the best way to proceed. It's gotta be. Well, I know what my vote goes to, finding your key. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Come on, being stuck in a box is no picnic. I'm counting on you, a great legendary hero. Whoa, 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 you brought the key. Yes, man, I owe you big. Here's the key. Yes, thank... Ha, thank nothing. Ha, <laughs> ha, fools. This is gonna be fun to read. I was tempted to skip over this because it's just a controls explanation, but... Oh boy, did you fall for it! I burned you! What, did you think I was going to help you? Dan said I'm going to spread a little of the suffering I've endured in that stupid box! Yeah, sorry, but those are the breaks. I'm going to cast an evil, terrible curse upon you. Bugly bugly woo, you're kissed! Yeah, <laughs> enjoy that curse, sucker! You got what you deserved! You want to hear all about the sweet curse I just dropped? Then listen well. <laughs> sweet curse I just dropped. I love the writing on these boxes. 
from now on, if you press Y in certain areas, you turn into a paper airplane. Ha <laughs> ha, trembling yet? Suffer the rest of your days under my terrible curse. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, I can't help but chortle. You're doomed. This curse is pretty rough, I guess, so I owe it to you to explain it. Ready? Stand on an airplane panel like this one, the floor starts to glow. Yeah, okay, you're on the panel. Now try pressing Y, and then BAM! You're a paper airplane! So like I'm a paper airplane. Now I'm flying. Worst part of this curse is that you must tilt left and right to control yourself. I guess if you got good at it, you might fly a long way. That's the only good thing. So, be honest. Isn't this curse just about the worst thing that ever happened to you? I zoned out. What was that? Yes, I get it. It's terrible. I love the deadpan options for both. Like, no matter what you pick. Deadpan snarker. It's beautiful. <laughs> Press B. You might return to normal. Maybe. Farewell, you foolish fool. Will you Francisca von Karma? You foolish fool, whoever foolishly fooled. That was fun. I'm pretty sure I just deafened a few people with my overzealous voice acting. But it was fun, and that's all that matters. Evil smile. So, uh, wow, just wow. What was that guy's beef? No, well, it helped, because now we have limited flight powers. And that's really helpful. I mean, Sora's Glide is helpful, and Sora's Glide is less useful than this just about. This one, at least. I mean, look at that. Look at that distance. Well, actually, Sora's Glide is more helpful because he loses distance a lot. Or, like, distance. He loses height a lot slower than the airplane does. And Glide controls better than the airplane does. But whatever. Now we're just talking semantics. I don't talk semantics. I talk badges. Oh, Mario, Kumbella, look at that. It's a door. Would one say that it's been around for a thousand years? It's the thousand year door spoken of in the legends. I can't believe it's real. So the legends are true. There it is. Big as life. Come on, let's move closer. Da 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 da. Let's see, I believe there's something to go find around here. Star piece, maybe? I thought there was a star piece around here if you looked around a bit. Well, there's a save block, but I know why the save block is there. And it's not that helpful until later. Hey, what's the deal with this weird pedestal, huh? What could it be, do you think? Well, let's check out the door first. Can't check out the door. Well, let's check the pedestal. You got a cutscene. And they teleport to the other side of the pedestal. I love cutscenes. They do stuff like that, and it's hilarious. Professor, what's going on? Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a light show centered around the magical map. Just look at those camera effects. Beautiful cinematics. No wonder it's magical. The map evolves. Sweet. So it looks like that's where we've got to go. And I love that shattering effect. It's so cool. That scene right there, when I first played this, is what sold me on this being an amazing game. And this is just the beginning. I've been recording for like, what, 35 minutes? And it's already like, oh, I'm sold. Look at those. Look at that. It's, it's awesome. Anyways, the location of a crystal star has been recorded on your magical map. And Mario's learned a special move. You can now use Sweet Treat. Each time you get a crystal star, you'll learn a new special move. Nice. Sweet Treat's not that helpful. Professor, the map. And what was with all those crazy lights? Hmm. It appears that information related to the location of the crystal stars appeared. And that shining light. It looked as if mysterious power was given to Mario. Well, one, would, one way or another, we should return to my place and study the map closely. Oh, yeah. Okay. As long as you're buying dinner. Spaghetti. Lots of spaghetti. Oh, uh, I probably shouldn't talk about spaghetti. It makes me sad. The spaghetti served here is terrible. Hmm, aha, I see. I say terrible, that's being unfair to the chefs here. It's just that they don't make they make it in an awkward style. Mario would not approve. You understand it, Professor? My dear, of course I do. Firstly about that light we saw shining on Mario. By my reckoning, Mario can now perform what is known as a special move. Show me your moves! A special move? 
Yes, it will. Stuff like this is better explained by example rather than words. Would you like to try it out? No. I've already played the first game. Just because the star cards stop giving me their magic doesn't mean I need it. This is very important. You better listen. I mean it. Are you ready to listen? No. I've already been using them. Hmm? You're absolutely sure? Oh, well, all right, then. Let's have a look at that magical map and see what we can learn about the... Uh, wow! Astounding! Amazing! But at once, all the map did was press A. This map has radar-like functions. It now shows the location of a crystal star. It looks like the first crystal star is to be found in a place called the Petal Meadows. Petal Meadows? Yes, their area is, vast, is a vast meadow that lies far to the east of Rogueboard. To tell you the truth, I've always thought that the place was a tad suspicious. The name Petal Meadows did come up from time to time in my research. Okay, fine. So we'll go there. Does anyone know how to get there or what? I'm fairly certain that somewhere beneath the city is a pipe to Petal Meadows. If you could just find that, you'd get there instantly. Pipe travel's efficient. Say, by the way, Mario, I'm curious. Where did you get that map anyways? Princess Peach sent it to me to force me to come here. She's a bit evil like that. From Princess Peach, really? Her Highness sent this to you, Mario? This is Princess Peach. This wouldn't be her, would it? Once again, talking in images. Yes, that's her. So it is her! I just said that. Your princess came to see me the other day. She wanted to learn about the treasure. I told her about the crystal stars and my suspicions about Petal Meadows. It doesn't seem likely, but perhaps she tried to go to Petal Meadows on her own. Well, then let's go look for her. You know, Professor, there was another suspicious group asking about the same thing. Hmm, but I can't imagine Princess Peach getting involved with them. But maybe they forced her to get involved. I mean, she is a bit, kid uh, you know, kidnapping prone. It's just, you know. It's mostly Bowser, though, at least, so maybe these guys aren't involved. Alright, it's settled. Off to Petal Meadows you two go. If Princess Peach is indeed went there, your first priority must be to catch up to her. Collecting the crystal stars is mean to an end, and that end is Princess Peach. I thought it was to the treasure, but okay. We can think about it like that. I got my map back. Aren't you coming, Professor? No, I'll stay in town and ask about Princess Peach and that suspicious gang. Besides, I doubt a shriveled old Goomba like me can handle the trials of the road. Good job ducking out. <laughs> Just like Toad's Earth, you two talk over tea or coffee or whatever. Of course, if anything happens and you need some advice, come see me, okay? You got it, Professor. Well, Mario, we're off. Yeah, there's no reason really to talk to him again, though. But his uh, wastebasket here is useful. If you don't use Goombella's tattle skill on a boss, uh, the boss, like any rare enemy that only shows up once, their data will show up there. So you can't miss it. It's really nice that they don't let you lock yourself out of stuff. Wait just a moment. What, you gonna hit me with a hammer? You got power smash. Mario, it's scary out there. Take this with you. It's called a badge, and it's incredibly helpful. Oh boy, it's a badge! Love badges. Badges break the game. They're beautiful. Such a good customization system. I love it. You see, depending on the badges you have equipped, you'll get much more powerful. What's important is knowing when, what the effects will be when you first equip a badge. Would you like to practice equipping and removing badges? No. I already know about them. I love them. They're my favorite. This, are you absolutely sure? This is the last time I'll ask. Do you want to practice? No. By the way, you need flower points to use the power smash move. In battle, you should watch only your HP, but your FP, dude. Did you get all that? Well, he's hoping you find the pipe to Petal Meadows. And this is why I really wish more games would add an option that says, I played the first game, leave me alone. So yeah, we're going to equip that badge in a second. First, I want to take care of something. So I've been... You saw me. I collected five... Uh, five uh, star shards. Star pieces, yes. And we're going to go trade them for a badge. Just like in the first game, you trade the star pieces for badges. And I learned while practicing that you can go get a really, really good badge right away if you go get those pieces. Hey Mario, what's the deal? You didn't equip the badge Professor Frankly gave you. Because I'm going to do it in a second, chill. If you, don't, if you don't equip a badge, it won't do anything for you. Equip it before you forget. We're, we're going to do that, chill. Okay, so we went back here earlier to get the star piece. But now that guy who was down here has moved up here. That's much more helpful. My name is Dazzle, and I collect star pieces. The more I collect, happier I am. So, guy, if you have any star pieces, I'll trade you my badges for them. Yay! Come on, let's trade. I'll do it. Which badge you want to trade for? And you can get Happy Heart. Oh, it's so good. I'll trade Happy Heart for sweet, sweet star pieces. How's four sound? Need two BP to wear this badge, okay? Yeah, I thought it was worth three. No, it's two, so you can use it right away. It's beautiful. Are you sure you want it? Yes. Hey guy, come on now. Can't we trade some more? No, 
I don't. You don't have any one uh, star piece badges. I like. You only have the sound effects badge, and it's not one I like. There's a better one later. What well, changed mine? Thanks to you, guy. My star piece collection has grown. Maybe we can trade again sometime. Yeah. And then I'm gonna equip my badges. Happy heart power smash. So happy heart, you gain one heart per turn, which is quite good because then you like you can avoid. You can just sustain. That's the magic word. Sustain. And whenever there's like ludicrous sustain in any game like I'm the I'm the guy like way back in the day when I played torchlight I did horrible in that let's play but I still stuck to my guns and built like pure passive skills and it worked because that's how I play it all it does work all the time because you just make your stats so high that like you take no damage you deal loads of it you don't need special moves and so infinite sustain like this is really helpful so we're gonna save and that's enough for this episode. This has been Jet Leon 1, and I will see you next time.